thank you, uh, Madam, for those uh, kind words. Uh, it's my proud privilege to be here, and I convey my thanks to uh, Dr. Bansi and the entire Diacare Con team. Uh, I would be uh, sharing my knowledge on sarcopenia, insulin sensitivity, metabolism with aging. It is, it is in continuation with the last talk where we were talking that, you know, we are able to control A1C, but I mean, not uh, like still we are failing, but we are unable to control weight at all. So weight management is going to be an important point and with aging, we are losing, uh, you know, uh, muscle mass, we are losing insulin sensitivity, and basically, you know, we are gaining fat. So point to be understood is that management issues are very important uh, in, in managing weight. Uh, with the newer molecules, whether it is GLP-1 or any metformin or SGLT-2, weight loss is there, but preservation of muscle mass is not there. So aging population world over, we are seeing almost, you know, uh, like around 30% of the population in the Western society is now uh, elderly population. And in India also, uh, we are facing the same problem. And as we grow old, take my words, our muscle mass goes down, our fat content goes up. So that is, you know, uh, this, is, this is with just aging. And if you're having diabetes, then it uh, precipitates further. Now, other important point is that Sarcopenia is now becoming another challenge uh, in patients who are already having diabetes and who are old. Now, what is sarcopenia? It is not only a decrease in the muscle mass, but also the strength of the muscle and the function of the muscle. So muscle mass, strength, and function, all three are, you know, they lead to sarcopenia. That is what, and this sarcopenia this leads to, you know, it's a serious global health challenge because this leads to, uh, you know, uh, physical uh, incapacitation, uh, frequent falls, more hospitalization, and more cost. So elderly people already have comorbid conditions. Along with sarcopenia, it makes worse. So can we preserve this muscle mass? I would be showing that. And what are the changes happening with age? That also is very important. So early screening, uh, high index of suspicion, early screening and management is the main, you know, key uh, uh, point to, uh, you know, preserve muscle mass. The multifactorial determinants, lifestyle factors, biological factors, and psychological factors, they all play an important role uh, in causing sarcopenia. Now we can see here that as we grow old, our activity also goes down and there is also uh, anorexia with aging, as well as there's decreased supply to you know, muscles, and there's also decreased neuronal uh, motor units. And there is also decrease in insulin growth factor one and growth hormone. So all these decrease in testosterone. All this also adds to already age-related you know, related sarcopenia. Then there is a mitochondrial dysfunction, which leads to uh, impairment of insulin sensitivity. That is why there's more prevalence of diabetes in elderly people, even in normal. Why? Because insulin sensitivity goes down. So overall, basically, uh, as uh, you know, we grow old, along with that, obesity comes into play, means you know, more fat content, less of muscle mass. That means decreased insulin sensitivity, mitochondrial dysfunction, pro-inflammatory cytokines, and adipocyte hypertrophy and hyperplasia. You know, when fat cells increase in number, they are healthy. When fat cells increase in the size, adipocyte increased size means it's inflammatory, release of inflammatory cytokines. So there is a vicious cycle of aging, obesity, and sarcopenia, all three, it goes on. So we have to break this cycle somewhere. Overall, when there is a sarcopenic obesity, there is less muscle mass and more of basically a fat mass. So this point has to be understood. There are various definitions of sarcopenia. How will you diagnose? It's not that patient is just complaining and you say it is sarcopenia. No. So it depends on, you know, in different Caucasians and Asians, different parameters are there. And they are based on three main criteria. One is physical function. That is, you know, the speed of the gait and other things. Then muscle strength, that is measured with the help of hand grip strength. 
and then muscle mass with DEXA. So all these three important points are, you know, to be understood. And then uh, we can see, so basically the gait speed is, you know, it, it is already, you know, we may not go into detail of this. So gait speed, muscle strength with the help of a hand drip, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, say uh, instrument, and then uh, the DEXA scan, all three are important. There are a number of working groups on obesity, uh, and these all have given different, uh, you know, uh, uh, definitions of sarcopenia. Now we can see this, those most important and most accepted uh, definition is by South Asian Working Group Action, Sarcopenia, SWAG Sarco Consensus 2022, muscle strength with the help of hand grip, lower limb uh, muscle strength, or muscle function by walking speed and muscle mass with the help of anthropometry or as I told the DEXA scan. So all three are important to diagnose a sarcopenia, okay? So two of these three should be present out of uh, three different parameters and these are all again different, I won't be going to detail by different, uh, you know, uh, organizations, hand grip, different parameters are there but overall we have to diagnose and then act accordingly. Now, with aging, important thing which we can understand is there is decreased mass, decreased muscle strength, there is insulin sensitivity which remains initially, you know, compensated but later on it decreases, mitochondrial dysfunction comes into play and then this is not only in the form of dysfunction like it is content, turnover as well as dysfunction and regenerative capacity of the muscles also goes down. So skeletal muscle, let's talk of metabolism. Uh, that skeletal muscles, basically they're important for glucose homeostasis. There is uh, glycogen synthesis and fatty acid metabolism. Both the things are going on. And this is through the secretion of myokines, which have autocrine, paracrine, and endocrine uh, effects on various organs. Now, aging of uh, skeletal muscle is central in the pathogenesis of immune senescence and sarcopenia. Now, we can see with aging, there is increase in, you know, myokines which lead to IL-6, IL-7, IL-15, all these increase with time, and that lead to decrease in impairment of the immune system also and IL signaling. So, overall, this resilience means the muscle uh, comes back to its normal state after stress. That happens in young people, but elder people, you know, the muscles cannot come back to its normal. So there is a decrease in resilience. And this is mainly, you know, there has to be a balance between muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein breakdown. Both should be balanced. What is happening? There's more of muscle protein breakdown and less of synthesis, and which happens like it has been seen in young people. It is more, more muscle protein synthesis and less of breakdown and reverse in elderly people. Then aging with insulin sensitivity, I've already mentioned that, you know, there is a dec decline in muscle insulin sensitivity with aging. That means less glucose uptake by the muscles and more hyperglycemia, more chances of, uh, you know, uh, development of hyperglycemia and insulin sensitivity. Then adiposity itself. So aging leads to a decrease in insulin sensitivity and then increase Fat content also leads to decrease in insulin sensitivity. So both are responsible. Aging plus adiposity leading to decrease in insulin sensitivity. So management is basically, you know, uh, like first of all, we have to diagnose. So find, assess, diagnose, and find out the severity of the illness, and then accordingly manage. And the three main pillars for that, one is exercise, one is less, you know, hypocaloric means less of carbs and fat, but more of protein. That point has to be understood, and then medications. So I'll be talking uh, briefly on this. So first, you know, is a combination of basically physical activity is the most important. With aging, we become more sedentary. Now, trials have shown that resistant training exercises are the most important, along with that high-quality protein intake. So both the things have to be combined then only, uh, you know, there would be preservation of muscles. So which protein? Now this is the point, you know, uh, like people ask, whey protein is the most important. Milk contains both whey and casein. So when we give milk, both are there, but casein is more than whey. 
so they they can be a segregation some commercial i will not recommend i don't recommend commercial but in certain conditions maybe we have to give sometimes whey isolate whey isolate is purely you know whey protein so those can also be given to certain people if required otherwise normal diet which i'll be telling you which contains more of protein is to be given so recommended is in these people when there is a sarcopenia normally we recommend 1 gram per kg body weight of protein but it should be around 1.2 not more than that because more protein also will lead to renal damage so it should be within certain limits it should be around 1.2 gram per kg that's one and second is after exercise or resistance training 20 gram of protein can be given if somebody is taking so that's you know after a bout of exercise now what are the natural foods which are rich in protein these are basically white meat we can say chicken and fish then poultry eggs seafood greek uh, yogurt skimmed milk and fermented milk so this is one then plant source which is beans lentils nuts need, uh, seeds soy and then you know it has been seen that vitamin d calcium are also important with aging omega 3 fatty acids are also important so there this is this is only to say these are so many you know other uh, you know commercially available uh, which uh, are not to be promoted they are very very costly it is only that one should not fall prey to you know because companies promote all these uh, you know to youngsters who go to gym and you can imagine 8000 3000 so so the natural sources you know are important and that should be uh, uh, preferred over the commercially available and trials have shown that increased protein intake we can see positively associated the certain things you know vitamin d and uh, has not be positive it is only to be given to you know if there is a deficiency not otherwise okay so then coming to which exercise now resistant training is very very important people are just walking going to you know park every day that will not really serve the purpose that is only to keep you alive and keep moving that you are active so it is like you know something being active is more you know it's is better than sedentary life but it will not preserve muscle mass take my words so resistant training which has to be progressive a resistant based training is very important and high intensity training it's not simple it has to be gradual and slowly it has to be achieved and combining resistance with exercise like with aerobic aerobic is also important to improve the mitochondrial respiratory capacity so both are important resistant training with endurance but resistance is more important okay now recently this this paper was you know uh, published and it just i saw it just couple of days back only 2024 European Journal of Preventive Cardiology now in this it was seen that intensity or volume because normally there is a confusion that duration of uh, exercise versus the intensity and in this it was shown that intensity of physical activity is more important than quantity or volume remember this so intensity is more important than the total quantity or the volume of uh, exercise then there's so many trials on exercise and we can see exercise not only you know uh, decreases uh, uh, glucose but also improves muscle strength this is another uh, where so exercise and nutrition supplementation are the best and a combination of resistance with endurance with good nutrition these are future treatment uh, which you know maybe in times to come uh, myo uh, statin inhibitors mesenchymal stem cells oral ghrelin analog anti obesity medications uh, where glp1 are now coming in a big way we had a discussion last and then testosterone also can be given if there's a deficiency so this is my last slide so take away message is very clear world population is growing aging we have almost 30% of the population now more than 60 years and with the time you know the our body becomes more sedentary less exercise less of muscle mass more of fat decrease in insulin sensitivity mitochondrial dysfunction all this lead to sarcopenia means there is you know impact on quality of life risk of fall risk of comorbidity more hospitalization more premature death so to deal with this 
we have to you know have a early recognition and uh, intervention is the key wear resistant training with endurance with the protein diet which i have already told you if required sometimes we have to give supplementation and so so this is and plus medications if required in certain uh, cases thank you